Welcome back aliens. In the last video, we have talked about what is subquery network and then we have given a name as well, which is Google for blockchain. Now in this video, let's try to install subquery and let's try it out on the machine itself so that you will understand what it does and how do we write our own subquery projects. Now, since this is our first video, maximum time will be spent on doing a setup. Now, of course, on your machine, you need multiple things to make it work. There's not a simple project, right? Basically, we are running a project which will index the entire blockchain. Okay, now which blockchain we are focusing here? We are focusing on Polkadot and we'll try to index the blocks. So every time you, you create a new block, we'll try to index that. And that will be quite fun, right? Okay, so what are the things you need? So the first thing you need in your machine is Node.js. So make sure that you have Node.js. Now, how do you verify Node.js? You can just go to terminal and you can type Node. And if you get the Node prompt, that means you have Node installed. Otherwise, if you don't have it, you just have to go to Google. And then you just have to go to Google and search for Node.js download. And this is where you will get your download, right? So you have to click on this and uh, you can select your OS, Windows, Mac, or Linux, the option of Linux as well. There, there are binaries available. And once you do this, download that, install it. It's very simple. And with Node, you also need NPM. So once you get Node, uh, you can also download NPM here. So you can download NPM as well. So just follow these steps and you can download the NPM. So you got two things. You got Node.js and you got NPM. There is an option for NPM. You can also go for a Yarn download. In my machine, I do have Yarn and I feel Yarn bit better than NPM. But again, it depends upon your liking. If you like NPM, go with that. Otherwise, you can also use Yarn. Both works. In fact, I've tested both the uh, softwares for subquery and both works perfectly. I saw some of the people complaining about Yarn, but I have not faced that issue. So let me know in the comment section if you are still facing issue with Yarn installation or Yarn with subquery. Okay, now what are the next thing you need? The next thing you need is Docker. So of course, right, you need to run this on your machine. So in your machine, it is better to have a Docker to run it. And by default, the image which you get runs on Docker. So make sure that you get Docker. Now, how will you download Docker? So you have to say Docker download and you can just go to the website, Docker home and you can download Docker from here or you can also download from a Docker desktop, depend upon which uh, machine you're using for Windows or for a Mac, it has the option. So make sure that you've got Node, NPM, Yarn and Docker. Now, once you have this thing in your machine, what next? We also need an editor where you can edit this stuff, right? And for that, we'll be using VS Code. So make sure that you have your VS Code installed. If you love any other editor, that's your choice, but we'll be using VS Code here, which is which works well. Uh, so download, again, just to repeat, Node, NPM, Yarn, I mean, Node, NPM and Yarn, Yarn is an option, uh, then Docker and VS Code. Now, once you have these things in your machine, let's get started. Oh, that, hold on. Even if you have all this thing, where is subquery? Of course, we need to get the subquery project as well. So what we'll do, the first thing we'll do here is we'll open our VS Code. So we'll do everything in VS Code itself and we'll open a simple project. In fact, a simple folder. So what I will do, so this is my VS Code. I will click on File and I will click on Open Folder. And in this, in my own folder, uh, my user folder, let me create, it's a sub Q as a folder, I know that's a weird name, but that's for subquery and click on open. Now this is where I will create my project. This is where I will do all the stuff. Let me close this one. Okay. Now, once you got your project, we need to have a subquery setup in this machine. Now the thing is in my machine I already have subquery installed, but what if you want to do it? So it's very simple. You have to click on new terminal and we'll increase this size a bit. I think it should be visible. Okay. Now with this terminal, you have to enter some commands. So just follow my commands. So as I mentioned, you can use uh, NPM or YAN. This time let's use NPM to do that because most of you might be using NPM. So we'll say NPM install and we'll do that globally at the rate subquery client. So basically we are getting the subquery uh, CLI, which is the way to interact with the subquery project, right? Now, the moment you do enter, it will download it. In fact, in my machine, I already have it. I'm not sure if, if I get an error because it will say, hey, you already have it. Why you want the same software multiple times? But in case if you get a new version, because I've installed it last week, there might be some new updates. So it's installing, let's wait for it and we'll resume after this. Okay, so as you can see, we got the subquery client install or CLI installed. Now, how do we verify this? So first of all, let me say clear and I will say subql help. And you can see we got all the commands which we're going to use. Now out of this, what are the commands we are going to use? We are going to use build. Uh, to build the project, we have code generation. This will be useful for the GraphQL. 
Uh, then we have a uh, in it to create a subquery starter project. Uh, we will not be using migrate. We we might do publish later, and then there, there's also a command for validate. But here, let's try to go with the first step. So what we need here is we need to get this subquery project. Now the thing is, you don't have to do everything from the basic or everything from the scratch, right? And that's the benefit which, which you get using subquery. You get a project which will help you to index the blockchain. So let me just clear this and how do you initiate a project? So it's very simple, you say subql and the command you use is init, that's it. The moment you say enter, it will ask you for certain, certain things. It will ask you for a project. Now basically we are creating a starter project which will have basic elements. Of course, we'll make some changes there. Uh, so here it will it is asking for the project name. Uh, the name I will enter here is let's say, okay, first of all, what exactly we are doing here. What I'm trying to do is if I go to my browser again, if, if I type polka dot, Explorer, and if I go to the first link here, so we'll be using polka.network, not Kusama. So basically, we just want to index all the blocks and each block will have certain information, right? So I want this information. So every time it creates a new block, I want it to call our handler. Okay, that's what we want. Now, the only thing is, now since we will be running this, it will start indexing from the first block. Okay, and that's the tricky part, right? Uh, we need to wait for some time to get the result, but at least we'll get some gist, right? Uh, it is indexing the files. So these are the things we need. Maybe I will try to fetch the uh, origin. I will try to fetch uh, the extrinsic. So basically in Polkadot network or Substract network, you have certain things there. We have events, we have extrinsics, uh, we have calls. In fact, we have calls in Avalanche, if I'm not wrong. No, we have call. The log is there in Avalanche. So basically we have multiple things to work with, multiple handles to work with. So we'll see those one by one. If you're getting confused, don't worry, just be with me. You know, once you see the code, it will make much more sense. Okay, so basically we are trying to create a project for fetching the extrinsic. So we'll say ext, of course you can have any name. We'll say ext demo. I will say enter. Okay, now it will ask you for which project you want to support. So basically it supports Avalanche, uh, Substract and Terra. So I want to go for Substrate. So I will say enter. Now in Substrate, it, it has multiple options. We'll select Polkadot. That's one. And now do you want a starter project or do you want to go for, do you have an existing project which you want to fetch? So we'll go for the starter project this time and then we'll try to see if we can get some GitHub projects. We'll say enter. And it will take some time to, to create that project for you. Uh, now it is asking for the RPC point, endpoint. So we'll go with this basic one. So this is basically, uh, this is the company, uh, one finality, which is the company of subquery. And this is the API for Polkadot. So we'll not change this. They, are, they have already done the indexing. We'll use that. From where you're getting the subquery starter project from the GitHub. So we'll use that as it is. And of course, if you have your own uh, subquery starter project, you can just mention your GitHub repository. Next, it will ask you for the author name. So since it is MIT license, I will use my name there. And description, okay, I don't want to change the description. Version, this is my first project, so I will go with the same version. So if you want to change it, then only mention, otherwise you can just say enter. You can also mention the license here, but then since this is MIT license, we'll continue with that. And then that's it, your project is ready. So you can see it's so simple. We are not done any coding yet, and we got the project. And this project has all the basic things you need. So example, if I expand this, see the number of files you have. Uh, so basically we got uh, the, uh, package.json, that means we need to install some packages. That's very important. Uh, we don't have those packages as of now. Uh, so what are the packages we need here? So these are dependencies we need. And also we have some commands which we, which we are going to use. We are going to use code gen. Uh, we are going to use starter, start docker. Otherwise you can just copy this and turn on the docker. In fact, in my machine, I already have a docker. I'm not running it now. I want to show you the errors which you get while running because when I was doing this, I got multiple errors. So it's better to learn from my, my mistakes, right? So let's do this. Okay, uh, next we need to also focus on this file, which is schema.graphql. Now what happens is every time you have a block on the blockchain, every block will have different information. It will have the information about the transaction. It will have the information about the outside world as well. It will have the information of rewards. So we need to get those information. Of course, we don't want everything. We can specify what exactly we want. And you can mention those things in this schema.graphql. Okay, so we'll do all those steps. The first thing we'll do is we'll first of all move to the extend demo folder and let's install all the packages which are required. So I will say npm install and done. It will install all the dependencies which is required. 
Okay, so basically we got all the packages which are required and those things will be available in the node module. So you can see it is downloaded all these packages and one of it is subquery. Uh, we also got it for Terra, we got it for Substrike. So basically we can use all these things while working on the project. Great. Okay, uh, so we got the packages, what next? So basically these are, these are the files we have to change to specify what exactly we need. Apart from this, this is the important file. The file here is, so this is your YAML file. In this YAML file, you can see uh, we are basically running this to the subquery node and subquery uh, query itself. And then this is coming from the repository. This is what we mentioned. Now, this is the important thing we have to remember. When you connect with the network, it will, it will ask you for the chain ID. So we have mentioned the chain ID here. And this is the endpoint which is which I already taken. Remember that when we when we were fetching the project, we got we have to specify these things. And then this is your data source in which this is important. Of course, the runtime will change based on what you select. Uh, we have cited subtract, so it is giving you subtract. But then if you go for Avalanche or Terra, it will change based on what runtime you're using. Even your handlers will change in Avalanche. We, I guess we have some extra handlers to use. But in uh, substrate, we have substrate, we have block, we have uh, event, handle event, and we have handle call. Now in our first code, which we are going to do, we will be only focusing on the block, not on event and call. So we'll only focus on the block. So this handle is basically will be called every time a new block is created. Handle event is for, for the events. Every time you have an event, the advantage is one block can have multiple events, right? And you can filter those events, which even you want to focus on. Example here, by default, they are saying every time there's a deposit, that's why it will be called. Uh, otherwise, you can also go for calls for the extrinsic values. Extrinsics are basically whatever is getting called from the outside world of the blockchain. Okay, apart from this, we have one more things to open. If you expand SRC and if you do mapping, we have a mapping handler and see the method names. So basically, we have handle block, we have handle event, and we have handle call. For this uh, files which we have talked about, remember handle block, handle event, and handle call. For those things, we have a mapping here. So these are the mapping, handle event, handle call, and handle block. Now one important thing, if I go back to schema.graphql, you can see the name of the entity. The name of the entity by default is starter entity. This is what represents what you're fetching from the uh, blockchain. You can have any name, doesn't matter. Now with the same name, there will be a mapping JS file, which we don't have as of now. So basically we need types and that's why you can see we are, we are getting error. How will you get those things? So that we'll see in the next video. So what are the things we have done till now? We have done with all the setup. We got node, npm, docker, and then we have also pulled the subquery project with the help of subquery client. And we got this project. Now we need to make some changes because if you can see GraphQL is having all these fields which are which doesn't have a name. We want to specify what we want to fetch. We want to fetch the block number. We want to fetch the block height maybe the origin, and we can specify all those things there. And when we run it, we'll get all the data. And that we'll see in the next video. Bye-bye.